let's start. So I will I will I will use the presentation, which is a little bit outdated, but now we are working on the very very new version, so everything will be updated after after summer, I guess. So in September, we hope we will release the, the new new version of of TCAE. And so I will I will I will go through through this presentation, which you can find also on our web pages, cfdsupport.com, here in the resources menu, in the documentation. Yeah, you can download what you need. So here documentation and yeah, there are, there is also many other many other sources for for the learning the software. So what what we'll do during this presentation? So I will start with the general introduction of the software, how to install it, how to test if the installation is okay, and then we basically go through the through the workflow. So we'll show how the graphical user interface looks like, how the mesh is generated, and how the CFD CFD part is set, and how the simulation is run. I think we will we will keep the let's say the FEA part because it's much simpler. But we will see what we can we can catch in two two hours. So we will basically start. May, maybe we'll end with the with the simulation and then we will see if we have some time for the FEA analysis. And what is not here but in the software it is is the optimization. But I think it's a little bit advanced. So first it's good to know to work with the simulation itself. And then maybe in, in a few weeks, when you get more familiar with, with the basics of, of the software, we will then move for the advanced, let's say advanced thing for the FA analysis and for some optimization techniques. Okay, so the first of all, the installation. So the software is delivered both in for Windows and Linux. So for those of you who likes Linux more, which, which I am also. <laughs> we basically de we are developing the software in Linux and and then we also compile it for Windows usage. So today I am in the Windows environment, but this, but basically the same the same workflow holds also in the Linux. So uh, depending on your preference, you 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 can download the Linux or Windows version. In Linux, the installation is pretty simple. You just Put this command into the, your command line, and and the software is installed. It is unpacked in the given folder, and then ready for usage. In Windows, it is even more simpler. It is just the installation file you can, which you run it, and there is a wizard which which will follow the installation process. And afterwards, you just put the license file into the installation, and everything is ready for for the usage. And if you install it, what the, the first step is uh, should be to run some simple case, yeah, which which using which you can you let's say validate if the installation is okay. So maybe maybe I can I can show you. Okay, so after the installation in Windows, usually it is installed directly on the C drive here in TCAE, depending on your version. So you will get 20. 21.09. So here's the installation, and here in the tutorials, there are some preset simple tutorials. So maybe I can run some simple one. So I can go for this pipe, for example. Each project file, let's say, or each case, TCE case, includes some compulsory files like the input geometry, some input, other input data, and mainly the configuration file. Which basically stores the setup, yeah, which you set in the graphical user interface, and this setup file can be opened. So if I double-click this setup file, the software is automatically opened, and this preset setup preset case is automatically loaded. Yeah, so this is what you what you see after clicking, and just to check that everything works, we can directly run the simulation. So here is the write button, which first, based on the setup, create the case. So I can click write. You can name your directory, or if if you if you do not put anything in there, 
so then there's some default default <clears throat> folder is created and then we can click run all and the whole the whole workflow is running so now the meshing is in progress then the simulation will run and afterwards you got the results yeah, so very, this is the very very simple very simple mesh or case or geometry some like piping bended pipe with inlet and outlet and this is also the example uh, where the first the CFD simulation is done and then the FEA analysis of the rubber part of the solid part of the piping yeah it's so now you can see the progress during the progress you, you can follow many quantities so I will I will show you later but basically if if this you see then you can you can be sure that the installation is okay and the software is ready for the usage okay so so if you, i suggest to do this after the installation because if there is something wrong you will you will know it directly and and then the problem can be solved with with us for example if some installation is bad or so okay so let's go back to the presentation so the installation and let's say try to first try to run the first case and now a few words about the about the TCA and the workflow so TCA in general is a is a unique CA simulation tool it includes several several, several components it is like it works like a, let's say kind of black black box so you just put the data in run the simulation and get the data out yeah or because it is based on the open source so the software behind for the cfd is open form for the fea is calculex and so so it it merges the benefits both best from open source and commercial codes it means you can use it as a black box like ANSI CFX and other codes but you don't see what is happening inside you don't see the code you don't see the algorithms so you can you just put the data in and then get get the results or you can use it as I as I call the white box so you can you can go to the black box and see everything what is inside uh, and you can somehow manipulate with the code because it's open source so you can you can use it change it and so but it's for the let's say very very advanced users so so the, the whole software is called tcae then it includes several components basically what we see today is the, is the tmesh where is the module for the meshing tcfd is the module for cfd simulation tfea is the module for finite element analysis and topt is a module for optimization yeah so basically you you manage some parameters and the topt is running in a loop for example tmesh and tcfd and try to find the best combination of parameters with respect for example with respect to the efficiency or or pressure drop or any other quantity there is also the ticket which is not a particular module but we can say we can let's say create on demand the the parametric model for example for as a project for some of our customers but say it's not not so important today to discuss it so tca is unlimited so there there are no limitation on number of users jobs or cores because because it's based on open source so we can we can really use the software to the fullest we we like the clear focus so it is always focus on the application so mainly on the turbo machinery field but also on the external aerodynamics or some heat transfer analysis but basically for example i would like to simulate the fan so there is a template for the fans and i will directly set the simulation for fans and i will get also the parameter which is important for, for the fan fan analysis so it is aimed on the particular application mainly turbo machinery but also the external aerodynamics it is not the general purpose code so it can be you can't uh, it is not ready for everything for i don't know for multi-phase for 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 other applications very specific applications so it's always focused and in time we are delivering the focused solution to the new let's say fields of interests what is also 
what is also good that we have several benchmarks available so the software is well validated and it's not a let's say it's not a black box you can really see what is happening and you can expect a, expect a good results what what you get with the TCE there is many libraries and open source packages and so on I think it's more than 100 but the base is basis the CA processor which is our code implemented in C++ which basically manages everything manages the workflow connect the connect the software communicate with the MPI or create the MPI tasks and so on open foam is the core for the CFD analysis paraview is the graphical user interface so which is inherently connected with the with the open foam yeah so there is nice connect, nice connection between paraview and open foam for for the visualization of the results so we decided to also put the graphical user interface of TCA directly into the paraview for finite element analysis there is a calculex for for mesh generation for the FEA analysis there is a netgen and many other AI libraries and codes learning mater materials so the everything you can be found on our web pages so go there during testing the software or learning the software there are many other webinars focused on some particular application or more general general focused webinars there are video tutorials some basic video tutorials how to work with the software there are, there are many ready to run tutorials you can you can try so for example if i would like to start to simulating for, for example pumps so i can go for the case studies i can for example choose centrifugal fan and here are the information about the simulation and you can also download download the case which is ready for the simulation i think somewhere in the bottom yeah so here you can download it so very very useful things on, on our web pages so please you can go there and watch and learn and learn from <clears throat> from these materials so in the general the workflow is as in the in the general CFD codes so first of all we need to have the input geometry so this is the first step so usually you had some CAD format of, the, of your geometry so for for the meshing purposes in TCA you need to first export it into the STL formats and based on the STL format the STL files you can then define the simulation domain including setting the boundary condition boundary types and so on or you can also if you have some external code for the meshing you can generate the mesh uh, outside of TCA and then input the ready uh, mesh which is all which is already ready <laughs> for the for the simulation yeah so first option is to input STL second option is to ex, uh, input external mesh so mesh which is ready for the simulation and then from the T-mesh the T-mesh is sent to the TCFD so in TCFD there you set some additional setup like physics simulation 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 parameters solver parameters and so on you simulate it and you get the report you can get the the fields to be visualized and so on uh, and the same holds for the fea analysis so again in tmesh you generate the, generate the computational mesh and then fea code fea solver solves the physics and solves the problem problem on on the mesh which were generated in the in the t-mesh module yeah so the inputs for tse for tcfd it could be a external fluent mesh cgns or open form format or it can be directly the geometry and stl format and the same for fea you can generate it in t-mesh based on the stl file or you can import the ready ready to simulate mesh in in vol in netgen format or or in abacus format what i always say is that the input geometry should be almost perfect yeah because if you put the garbage in then only what you get is the, the is the garbage yeah so you need to have nice 
nice geometry which really describes your problem you have to be sure that that the geometry you are using is really connected to your problem and has and the quality of it is at the highest level yeah so TCA first the TC itself and the simulation setup so CFD simulation setup is done in this in the in the GUI the processing is also done in the GUI and the reporting can be also managed from the GUI as we will show in few in few in few minutes so about the GUI so the Paraview GUI is in Paraview <laughs> sorry TCA GUI is implemented in Paraview so for those who are a little bit familiar with the Paraview it, it will be really easy and you will you will navigate in the GUI very very quickly so let's oh maybe let's open a plain plain TCFD project or TCA project so I will directly open the software you can see that for those who who, who knows uh, Paraview it's standard let's say standard layout but here in the pipeline browser there are several items which hold, which hold the setup for each module of the TCA so basically each item holds some specific setup or each item holds specific geometry to be visualized in the render view and we will show how to how to work with this right yeah, so there is somehow basic splitting of the Paraview. So here is the pipeline browser in which all the, all the items and the relevant setup can be visualized. Here is the main render view, which can be split. So you can split it to see either input mesh, the end final results. There are also windows for showing the final report, for following the instant instant values during the simulation, and windows for for following the log of the solver of each step of the workflow or follow some error messages and information about, about what is happening. Yeah, so as, we, as I already mentioned, there are, ba um, based on what, what you enable here, so you can, you can see even the let's say four main items and each item holds the specific setup for each module yeah so some simulation for cfd for tfea materials properties boundary conditions and for topt some <clears throat> optimization or doe method and how to uh, definition of the parameters to be varied for the optimization and so on and so on so first item is the manager using which you can enable or disable the module you would like to you would like to follow and then each item then holds the setup for for the particle module yeah there is one very important and almost not visible <laughs> button so the setup works in two modes some standard mode which is visualized in the blue so it includes only the standard standard parameters so for example i can show you for example here here are some standard setup for the meshing and if you enable the advanced you will see some more options some advanced option for for setupping each each part of the of the workflow yeah, so this is the advanced button so we can switching between them yeah, for example here we have some additional scripting options in the standard mode you don't have access to that to it so it's just about the visualization so be aware of this okay so configuration file okay maybe i will i will we will start on some particle example okay so let's let's close this and okay i have prepared some geometry so here we have we have a very simple geometry of the radial fan ready in stl so each part each part is split into into the meaningful parts so let me just introduce the model we will we will use today 
So you can by double click, you can click on each STL, which can be then visualized in the Paraview. By opening, you can you can you can see all of them. Yeah. So this this is the our geometry definition. So very simple radial fun geometry with the with the rotor part and with the volute part. Yeah. And each each part should define some meaningful component of the geometry. I will explain later why the splitting has to be has to be done. Okay, so I will I will describe this during the during the life example, let's say, but let's but what this slide says that the management of the of the simulation when it is ready is done directly here. As I already show, shown you, first you need to write the case. You can also write and delete all the results if you want to re recompute something. And then is most important button, run all, which runs the whole simulation. Or you can click step by step <clears throat> during the mesh generation, CFD simulation, FEA simulation, and so on. Yeah, advanced mode, I already shown. Life life monitoring, I will show you. So during the simulation, the TCFD module includes the quantities item, which can be visualized as the graphs in the in the in the GUI. I will show you during the simulation. And now we will go for the T mesh because if we have no mesh, we have no simulation, right? <laughs> so let's let's start. Or maybe so this is the meshing. Maybe I will I will a little bit skip and I will show you the the main principles of the input da input data because it is it is the most important part uh, to know how the input input STL should should look like. Yeah. So as I already said, so for example, you got you get usually the CAD geometry of your of your domain of of interest of your turbo machine design or something like that. So first of all, what you need to do in your CAD software is to prepare the geometry for the CFD simulation, for example. So what does it mean? You need to extract the, the so-called wet surface, so, so the boundary which defines the flow area. So basically from some kind of this shape, you need to extract the shape which, which defines the flow path, the Flow, flow domain. So this is the first, and then you need to create inlet, outlets, and these physical boundaries for the for the CFD simulation. What is also important that the simplicity is the best, or it's very important. So if you if you include all the complex shapes in some complex geometry, you will get very difficult to mesh those parts properly. And if so, the final mesh will be very, very fine, includes millions of cells. And maybe it, it's not necessary to include all the details because maybe not all the details will influence the final final results. Yeah, so, so the simplicity is very important, but I like this quote, everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simple. But not simple means that yeah, if it if it's if it is too simple then maybe it doesn't does not does not follow your original problem yeah and you you will get different results so make it as simple as possible but not simpler so nice geometry shape of your of your domain what is important when, when during the mesh generation or preparation of the input data is the component thinking so we we split the domain into the meaningful part parts. So in turbo machinery, usually it means to split the domain into the stators and rotors. Why so? Because from the simulation point of view and definition of the of the of the problem, from the mathematical point of view or numerical point of view, you need to treat the rotors specifically because you apply some method which simulate the rotation either in steady state mode or in transient, but you need to assign the cells in the rotor specifically. You basically say, okay, this cell includes is included in the in the rotational framework and 
the equation which solves for the rotational part are a little bit are transformed into the rotational framework and this must be somehow said yeah, which cell is in the rotor part and which cell is not in the rotor part so you can imagine as if we have we have, if we have for example as radial pump example so this is our flow domain here this inlet here is the impeller volute and outlet let's say so we should think in the components so at least we should split the rotor part rotor part from the <clears throat> from the stator part so so the inlet pipe is not rotating right so we we define it as a simple as a as a as one component then we have the rotor part so we define it as the second component <clears throat> and third part we have the volute and for example the fourth part we can have the outlet tube so this should be somehow somehow splitting of the input geometry so what does it mean so for example i need to export the stl specifically for the outlet of the pipe for the wall and for the inlet to the pipe yeah so each component holds a separate computational mesh or a mesh region and this is imported or generated by tcfd or by tmesh okay so but each component so this is the, these are the component, but each component has to be also also split it into the meaningful part. Why? Because in CFD we need to define so-called boundary conditions. So we need to define what is the inlet, what is the outlet, which parts are rotating, which parts are not rotating, or some specific <coughs> specific boundary properties like if the wall is rigid, if it's if it's with friction or without friction, and so on. So therefore, we can have also splitting of each component. So for example, <clears throat> what we need here at least, we need definitely what is the inlet and what is the outlet from the rotor. For example, what are the blades? What is the hub? What is the shroud? Which is also useful for the further processing. And that's basically all. Then for, from, the, from the meshing point of view, because for example, the leading edges are pretty pretty complex shapes yeah it's there, there's high curvature so you need to have finer mesh on them yeah to follow follow the leading edge properly and for example the the pressure and suction side of the blade could be meshed a little bit rougher yeah to save so to save cells so any safe of the cells then then implies lower simulation time and so on so it could be also handy to export the leading and trailing edges separately, and then because I have more more space to vary the parameters of the mesh, because then I can say, okay, on the leading edge I will have much finer mesh, and on the pressure and suction side I will have a bit rougher mesh. Yeah, so each color representing one STL, because based on the STL we then say, we then define the boundary types and boundary properties. <clears throat> And, and let's say the last thing to mention is the interfaces. So if we split the domain into the components, we need to somehow define define the, how these components are connected. Yeah, so basically, if we put everything together, we need to have one nice mesh. And for example, interface is, is the part of the geometry which connects two components. So let's say <clears throat> the outlet from the volute has to be same as the inlet inlet to the pipe so if you put everything together these interfaces matches perfectly yeah so some softwares allows to have have let's say kind of non-matching interface but but the tc does not allow this from the accuracy point of view so for example if you have volume to rotor connection so from both sides, these interfaces has to be aligned perfectly. Yeah, so the red one is, for example, a rotor outlet, and the green one is volute inlet, and this must match perfectly. Yeah, Tmesh also, or Tmesh TCA also allows to have some kind of periodic components. Yeah, so, so it, what does it mean if you have some symmetrical shapes like <clears throat> radial impellers or axial axial fans or this is the example of of the francis turbine 
here are the guide veins and here's the impeller itself so you can also create in the CAD you can prepare the input geometry in the segment format so you just simulate one segment of the <clears throat> on the of the guide veins and one segment of the impeller so in this case in this periodic cases the interface of each segment uh, is not necessary to be accurately aligned but let's say if you if you imagine the virtual full wheel interface so this full wheel interface is, has to match perfectly so it doesn't matter the relative position of the of the segment but the if you if you create a virtual interface for the full wheel so it must <clears throat> it must match perfectly for the neighboring components then because the stls are basically the first discretization of the smooth cat geometry yeah so we, the surface has to be triangulized and then export exported as stl so this triangulization also can have an effect of the final final <clears throat> results in the sense of of the finest of of the triangulization so if you have if you do the triangulization too too rough too rough then basically your geometry will be also too rough yeah the, this is nice comparison so if you if you discretize the stls too rough instead of the let's say smooth circular shape you will get some polygon this holds also for the blades which, which means you don't you don't simulate a nice and smooth blade blade but you simulate you are simulating some high, some kind of zigzag shaped blades <clears throat> which which can give you different results although the the input cat was perfect but the input for the meshing is not perfect and this can bring some errors to the final simulation so therefore it is always good to have nice and smooth stls and maybe this also brings some additional additional flaws if this if the stls is too rough so for the radial let's say for the radial connections so if you have if you have too rough this radial output outlet to the volute or from the rotor to the volute and if if the shape is too too rough then you can see that for example if you if you put these stls all together so these interfaces the for example the normals the normal components differs too much which brings also which brings the errors into the into the numerics and errors into the final results so it's always better to have nice and smooth stls so this this was the this was the main aspects of the input of the input data so i will go back for the meshing part and let let's start how how the real work looks like okay let's start yeah team cfd okay so let's go back to our case so i will close so this is our input input geometry i can make for example here if i create a group which which is here so now yeah it is visualized in different colors so this these parts are are the separate stls and we can we can show we can use it use it for the for the simulation setup if i make a slice for example or clip so we can see that yeah these are the interfaces for example from the rotor to the volute and it matches perfectly so this is what exactly what we need for the for the good for the good simulation okay so i will get rid of the power view and i will open open the ah uh, not ah uh, this is test test version of very very new version which is not working properly still so this is not what, what i would like to use i would like to use yeah this release version <laughs> all right okay so this this is a very plain setup so first because i will first what we need to have first is the mesh so i will not set i will not setting up the fea or cfd analysis for now so i will get rid of them and i will keep just the mesh so first what i need to do is create a setup file 
Yeah, so I will click here on the save button and then I will locate some proper uh, proper folder. So I will I have somewhere the webinar folder. Yeah, here webinars and today webinar. And here I have fun life example in which already the STLs are stored. So I will put it next to the next to the folder with the with the input geometry. So I will <clears throat> name it as test case, for example, radial fun, let's say. Yeah. So this is my setup file in which all the setup will be stored. Okay, so setup file is ready, and now we will go for the for the T mesh. So here we have two menus, for example. In first, we we define what the output should be. So because I am now preparing the mesh for CFD, so I will just click on the CFD mesh. The scale factor very important, very important geometry because the solver needs to know what what um, the solver always operates in in meters in SI units. Yeah, so we need to scale the input geometry to the meters. What does it, does it mean? So if the original units of the STL files is in meters, so I will set it, okay, the input, basically what does it mean? Input units are meters. If, because usually CAT, CAT works in millimeters, so if the input STL is in millimeters, so I need to define, okay, I need to tell the software that, okay, the input, input units of the, of the STL are millimeters. So honestly, I'm not sure. I think they are in meters, but we will we will we will know it later. Okay, scripting. We don't need scripting. It's for the very advanced usage. Rotation reference frame because we are we are doing the rot turbo machinery, so we need to define what is the uh, rot rotational axis. So I'm not sure. So I will first set, I will first import the geometry, and then I will see based on the geometry what is the rotational axis. Or usually, if you work with the with the model, you know what what is the rotational axis. So here in the components, here we bring bring the 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 input input data. So we will have two components. Yeah, we have, we will have the rotor and the volute. So here I will click to have two components. So first component will be will be the rotor in our case. So I will name it as rotor. And the reference frame will be rotating. Yeah. So in default we have two reference frame, one static and one rotating. So rotor will be rotating. Now the mesh input, yeah, the director with the STL files. So I will locate the proper folder where my STLs are stored. So again, I will go to the webinar folder today's web webinar and here i will i will click on the geometry yeah and now this table is filled by all the stls which were found and now we can start to assigning what which stl which stl define define the rotor rotor part Okay, so let's start. So there is definitely impeller impeller inlet, and how how the how the STLS is chosen for it is by clicking on the type. Yeah, so in the type there are several types describing some physical meaning of of the of the boundary. Maybe I will borrow again the the, the presentation. So here is the definition of each of each section. And yeah, this is the definition of the rotational frame. Here are some some information about the bounding box for the external aerodynamics. So by enabling this, you need to create a virtual virtual wind tunnel, let's say, without inputting the STLs. So it's for the external aerodynamic codes or um, cases. And yes, this, these are the types of the boundaries oh sorry here yeah so by clicking on on the type you will assign assign the stl to the given part and you will also choose what is the type of the boundary i think there is somewhere yeah here here is the is the description what each part means 
So it's pretty, I think <clears throat> it's pretty straightforward. So for the physical inlet and outlet, there, there is the boundary type inlet or outlet. So it means is it, it is the physical physical inlet or physical outlet. It's not used for the connections, but it's really the first inlet into the domain and outlet from the from the domain. Then there are some AMI, internal translational and rotational AMI, arbitrary mesh interface is the abbreviation for AMI, and it's used for the connecting to 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 patches to boundaries together. Yeah, for example, if we have the segment simulation, so you have two periodicities, yeah, which define the segment. So you need to connect these two periodicities by, for example, this rotation AMI. Then we have some geometry specific types, empty and symmetry. So empty means it's used for the 2D meshes. So the direction which is which includes just the one cell. Yeah. So this 2D mesh from the from this uh, point of view. Then these Empty patches, these parallel planes defining the empty direction are set as as empty, and symmetries for <clears throat> define the symmetry. Then we have two types for the for the wall. First is wall, and second is uh, wall slip. I think now it, there is just the wall, and wall slip is then set in the boundary conditions. And there are many many types for the wall, but but are somehow connected to the turbo mesh in any case. So we have a specific type for the hub, shroud, blade. Each part of the blade can be can have the specific boundary type, but on the background it's, it's, it's very similar to the wall. And for the connection of components, there are <clears throat> there are interface types. So inlet interface, outlet interface, free stream interface. What is the difference? Inlet and outlet interface define the interfaces where the flow direction is known. Yeah, so this is if it's the outlet from the pipe, that's it definitely the outlet interface because the flow goes uh, in the outlet <laughs> in the outlet direction. And free stream interface is for those connections where where the flow has no specific di direction. So for example, if you have some open impeller or if you have some, let's say just the drone impeller. And it is it is enclosed in the cylindrical shape, for example, as a one STL. So you so there is no obvious part where the flow goes out and where the flow goes in. Yeah. So for such a types of of boundary or interfaces, the free stream interface should be used. So let's go for it. So here we here we have the impeller inlet. So I will set as the inlet because it's the first the really inlet into the domain. After I'm choosing the proper type, I can click apply and the yeah the boundary appears here <clears throat> in my render view. Okay, then for example, there is the impeller outlet, which is not physical outlet, but it is the connection. It makes the connection to the volute. Yeah, so it it and we know that the flow goes out, so we can set it as outlet interface, which is here. Yeah. <clears throat> then we have the impeller hub, so we can create as a hub. We are impeller shroud, so we can set it as shroud. Now we can click apply, so we can see this is this is okay. And now <clears throat> we need to we need to have the blade. So in this case, the blades is split into into the parts. So the leading edge I can set as as a blade leading edge blade pressure side, blade suction side, and blade trailing trailing edge. Okay, <clears throat> so now all the boundaries are set. And maybe I, I will now do the same for the volute and then we will start setting setting up the parameters for the meshing. So I will I will do the same for the component too. So I can name it as, for example, spiral or volute. I will use the same folder with the geometry. Apply and now <clears throat> I can choose the proper parts. So spiral inlet is the outlet from the rotor, so it is the inlet interface. Spiral outlet is the physical outlet, so it's outlet. Spiral wall. I, just the wall, so I will name it as a wall, and 
I think there is the last one yeah, is this kind of this connection between rotating and non-rotating part. So yeah, this RSC connection I can also set as as a simple wall. Good. So I think everything is set from the geometry point of view. So the input data are set. And for example, what we can do is if you denote the CFD geometry, you can here choose the color representation. And if you use this VTK block or maybe this one, VTK composite index. Uh, no, no, component colors. Yeah, yeah, this one. So now each component we have in different colors. Yeah. So now we have nicely distinguished the, the two components in the render view. Okay, and now I can see that our our rotational frame, our rotational axis is set in the wrong way, right? So we can go now for the for the rotation. Why there are two 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 frames? So we have we know because we have two components where one is rotating and one not. So we therefore we need to have one frame which is static and one frame which is rotating. Usually both both uh, transformation axes should be the same but there are some specific cases where you have for example two different impellers on the different axes then you should have more rotational frameworks of course <clears throat> so here definitely the rotational axis will be z so i will skip to z and i will set the static part in the same way yeah so now i think we have a proper proper rotational axis for this for this geometry okay by hitting the apply you always approve the changes you have made and in the tc manager you can go for the to save this intermediate setup if something happens everything what you set up to now will be will be stored and can be can be restored if for example something crashes or your computer get off so <clears throat> so very important to <clears throat> time to time save your preliminary setup Okay, so now from the machine we just set the input geometry, but now we need to have the we need to set the parameters of the mesh. So maybe for this purpose I will I will borrow the presentation again. Okay, sorry, I see some see some uh, see some questions if the rotor is exported. As a one single STL, can we still select the inlet outlet and so on? Unfortunately, not. So if you put <clears throat> the rotor as a one STL, you have no option how to how to set what is the inlet, what is the outlet, <clears throat> because the table basically the separate STLs defines each part of the geometry. If you have just one STL for the whole rotor, you cannot. There is no tool for distinguish how what is the inlet and what is the outlet. Yeah, so this can be. This is a little bit. Kind of a drawback but during the preparation time you are able to properly set what the splitting of the boundary and then the, it is an easy job here yeah so so it, it is a must yeah perfect <clears throat> what i didn't say okay is the other other let's say other other column which is this one so this column defines if the if the uh, if each geometry part is rotating or not, yeah, rotating via via the rotational frame. So, for example, because if you choose the rotating reference frame, then everything is automatically set as rotating. But for example, if you have some, I don't know, axial fan where the shroud is not rotating, yeah, because there is a gap between, let's say, the blade and and the shroud. So then, for the shroud, you can go set as static and now in this option <clears throat> the shroud is not rotating yeah but in this case it is rotating yeah because it's part of the of the wheel and similar it holds you can define a rotational part in the, in the static component for example for some reason if if uh, if i don't know if the shroud is also the outside part of the shroud in, in a different setup is a part of the static component so you can say okay some part okay this no, not an outlet for example this this part is rotating yeah so you can also set physically that some part is rotating in the in the stationary stationary reference frame 
so but only if of course it makes sense that if this part is is symmetrical yeah so rotational if it has a rotational symmetry you can assign the rotation also in the static <clears throat> in the static component okay yeah you can but it's also a nice feature that you can visualize each part so if i double click here then you will see that the, the visualization of this part in the in the render view which is, which is a nice feature yeah there is a topology graph which is also good to know so in the next section which is here in the components map there is somehow the <clears throat> topological topological view on your on your setup and for example here what i see is that there is no connection between rotor and spiral uh, so so you need to make connections which is done very easily so for each outlet interface has to be connected into some inlet interface of the of other components so if i use the right click so if i use the right click on the outlet interface then i have options to if i have more components there will be more options to which which patch from the different components this part should be connected so we have only one option so i will set the spiral inlet so now spiral inlet is connected and we can see nice topological graph so at the end you should see that oh sorry that in this graph you should get from the from the inlet to the outlet basically using these solid arrows and that's that's somehow a good tool how to how to just check that everything is properly connected yeah each component is connected to to its neighbor and so on so this is the topo topological map and now we are going to the mesh parameters so how how it works so f so the for now the only meshing tool in tca is the snappy hex mesh which works in the in the following way so the first i will visualize it here i will get rid of of this visualization so here yeah, here is the bin icon so we can get rid of the visualization so first it starts from the so-called background mesh size yeah so i will i will use the cube cell size and for example <clears throat> my original geometry my background geometry will be 10 centimeters for example <clears throat> so let's set in this way all right so maybe it's too too fine so let's say i will set five centimeters so first the snappy hex mesh needs some kind of some uh, kind of background mesh in which your shape is placed inside and then you say what will be the refinement of these basic cells with respect to the geometry so if if for example you said that the pipe inlet will have the level two it means that every cell which is intersected by the given boundary will be split to the given level yeah it always it is done this simple simple splitting into the half <clears throat> and in this way you define <clears throat> sorry I will, uh, in this way you define the refinement of the cell locally therefore it is for example good to have the specific part for the leading edge because then you can set high level to have the finer finer mesh yeah so so this is the first thing to set so the background mesh size so okay let's keep in this way i will i will make it rough to to have an, to have a, to have a, a, the simulation pretty quick to for the live presentation but for of course for the final simulation you need to have fine enough yeah because the accuracy of the results is de also depending on the on the mesh refinement of course from the numerical point of view so this is the background mesh and then you need to also define the the internal point yeah, because you have in this in this framework you have two options you can keep everything what is inside your geometry or ev everything what is outside from for example for external aerodynamics <clears throat> so you need to define the internal point 
so you can define it manually or you can you can take this take this point and put it inside so for example here is here's the radius for just the, for the visualization of the point so i can it's just the visualization purpose so this point in the sphere so i need to put the point inside the domain so what i also like is that you can you can make a vis uh, visibility you can play with the visibility of of any object so the cfd geometry is what is holding the input geometry and if you click here on the display there is the opacity bar and you can decrease the opacity <clears throat> and then now, now you can see also inside so i will put this point somewhere inside the <coughs> sorry, inside the geometry Okay, so I think I'm I'm there. So I need to click. I can click apply and get rid of the of the points, and the point is set. And and similarly, we can do for the spiral. So usually, we can set the same same cell size for the spiral, and also put <clears throat> put the point inside. So. So now I need to put inside the spiral. Okay, it's inside, perfect. So for example, I can save it for now and, and go back for the setting of refinement. So let's go for the table. So I will start with the rotor. So now what should, what, what, what should I set? Yeah, so it's basically when you start creating the mesh, you need to it's basically several iterations so you start to refinement each part <clears throat> so for example because the blades are the most important part it should be finer than for example inlet or outlet because the flow goes just through and hop and shroud should be also should be can be a little bit rougher than the blades but it depends on the goal on the, of the project of course and what how fine you need to have the, the mesh for example for from the by plus point of view or if you need to use some inflation layer and blah 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 so there are many aspects and you can play directly here with with the finer mesh uh, with the mesh refinement so let's i will start with some with some guess so for example i will set level of refinement one for the hub and shroud <clears throat> okay now i can mention why there are why there are two columns with minimum and maximum level of refinement so if you set for example minimum one and maximum three so then the algorithm decide can decide which level of refinement to place on the given part of the of the hub for example and it is <clears throat> it is followed or it is triggered or managed by by the local curvature so if the local cur curvature of the shape is pretty high then it usually set the maximum level of refinement if in places where the where the geometry is flat it, it usually sets the minimum level of refinement but for now, let's say I will I will set to level one for the hub and shroud for the blade. Let's say for the pressure and suction side, I'll, I will set level three, uh, two sorry, and for the edges, I will set level three. Let's say, and the inland and outland I can keep on zero, but usually for the interfaces, you can also see that for example that there is a pretty small. Space Space between the leading edge and uh, and the interface, and because the interface is pretty curved, so again the high level of refinement will improve the accuracy of communication between on the interface. Yeah, because if the mesh is too rough, then the shape is zigzag, right? If the mesh is fine enough, then it's it's smooth and and the communication between the interfaces is much 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 more accurate so let's say i will set for outlet interface for example level two which is this one okay and let me just quickly set the same for the for the spiral for the volute so because i set on the outlet interface level two so it makes sense to have the, the same level of refinement from both sides so i will set also level two for the inlet RSC connection, which is I think this de detailed part here. So what I can say, set here, for example, I can set 
let's say one or two because it is there is the edge so for example i would like to have finer mesh on the edge at this part at outlet i can keep zero because it's a physical outlet and on the spiral <clears throat> I can set again, let's say level one and two, because it is the whole part. And for example, here in the tonk area, for the cut water area, I would like to have finer mesh. So I can I can set this one, for example, and let's see what will happen. Okay, so, so now from the, let's say, basic parameters, I have set everything. So we can, we can give it a try to generate the mesh and check the mesh if it's okay for the simulation. And before, okay, what I what I didn't mention that <clears throat> the machine can run in parallel. So you can set the number of processors for the parallel run. So usually more processors lowers, lowers time for the mesh generation. And my computer has, I think, 10, 10 cores. Let's see where, is, where, can, where I can check this PC, I guess. Right, Windows. Oh, I'm not the Windows guy. This PC. Right click, properties. Oh yes. So I have Intel Intel Core i9. And how many? Oh, oh, maybe I can in the performance right, which is yeah here. Sorry. Here performance and I have ten cores. Yeah, I can also mention here that if you have hyper threading enabled, so usually you have you have more logical processors. So per, per physical core, you can have two logical processors, which is handy if you if you run many different codes or different programs, then one one processor can manage two different <coughs> processors processes more effectively but for the C, from the CFD simulation point of view it, it makes no sense to use 20 instead of 10 because the let's say the peak performance doesn't is not increased by the logical processors so usually use the maximum number of cores you have on your computer the physical cores not the not the logical processors so i can set 10 so let's let let's set 10 processors I will save and now I will test it. So, for example, I can put it into the mesh test directory. So I will click apply, write the case, and I can click mesh all. So now we can see the progress. So the meshing is done. For more information, you can, I think, here you can enable the TC output window, which is here. And now you can see what is happening. So, usually, if you know, Open form a bit. These are the these are the sections or the lo lock locks from the open form snappy mesh tool. Okay, and now everything is ready. So, for example, I can open the new render view. Yeah, by splitting this window, I can click here render view, and now I can click here, for example, show mesh. Okay. So if I click here, I, I would like to have only the input geometry here so I can get rid of all these items. And when I click to the right render view, I can click here the CFD mesh. All right, and I will get rid of this of this of these shapes from the from the T mesh. So where is it? Get rid of this and get rid of the rotational framework. So if I close it. Okay, so this is the rotor mesh, and what, <laughs> yeah, what we can see is that there are there are flaws at the at the outlet at the edges. Yeah, so the some outlet parts totally disappear. So on this mesh, we can't can't simulate anything here yeah, because the shape is ugly and it doesn't follow our original geometry. If you click CFD mesh, and here you can choose the surface with edges to see the topology of the mesh. So here we can see, okay. Definitely, I would like to have the finer, for example, either finer edges or the finer outlet interface. So let's go back to the T mesh setup and for the component one. And okay, let's say blade trailing edge, I will set to level four, let's say, to have finer mesh on the edges because the blades are too thin. 
and I will set outlet interface to three uh, to have finer finer mesh on the outlet interface. Okay, maybe I can I can visualize the the current uh, the current um, mesh for the spiral too. So let's go back here. Yeah, because I have changed the setup for the rotor, so the rotor part disappears because I have changed the setup for the rotor. So so. It, it's not valid, the original mesh, so therefore it disappears and must be regenerated. And the spiral, yeah, I think the spiral is fine for our simulation. Yeah, the, the mesh is pretty pretty rough, but it follows nicely the original shape. So maybe we can we can use it. And yeah, I will maybe because I have refined the, the outlet interface, so I will also refine the inlet interface for the component which were here, here, yeah. And maybe this shape on the spiral, which is here is somewhere also zigzag, you, you can see it. So I will also refine this RSI connection part. So maybe I can set two and four, uh, two and three. All right, and let's regenerate it again. So I will save my new setup. I will click write and clean. So I will write the new setup and clean what was already generated and I will mesh it again. The setup has been changed. Okay, I didn't click, right? I'm not sure. And now mesh all. Okay, I didn't click the button properly. All right, so now the next iteration is generating for me. So basically this is how how you, how you how you will work during the mesh generation so you will iterate until you are satisfied with the mesh shape so you always need to need to really check the shape of the of the of the mesh in all parts if there are no flaws and so okay so i will you can see that the mesh is really really rough but for for our example it will be i hope it will be okay for simulation because it will be fast but we 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 can't expect very accurate results yeah, on this really rough mesh. And and the spiral, yeah, it looks also good, I think. Yeah, now also this edge is much better right now. It's not tic tac. Okay, so here I am satisfied. So I will I will just explain what can be set more here. Maybe I will borrow the presentation. So this is the description. Yeah, here how it works with the background mesh or the combination of of the background mesh and the, and the level of refinement. So how you can save the cell cell amount. So because we are in 3D, so every splitting of the of every splitting of the background mesh size to the half will bring eight times more cells. Yeah, because we are in 3D and it's really greedy for <laughs> for the cell amount. So for example, if I would like to have for example, walls meshed in this this topology in this refinement level, so I can save many cells by 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 setting the background mesh to the to the double size, but increase the refinement on the wall. Yeah, so now the walls are refined very in the same way, but the but the inside is a little bit rougher, but we set, we we save half millions of cells. Yeah, so you need to also keep in this. Uh, to keep in this way then for example if we if we again double the size of the background mesh and double si uh, and increase the level of refinement on the wall we have this mesh but we don't save too much cells anymore yeah so so from from the cell from the numerical accuracy and the cell amount i would vote for example for this topology of the mesh yeah, because another Another doubling of the background mesh and refining the wall doesn't bring doesn't does not bring too much safe in, in cell size, for example. So you can also thinking about the meshing in, in this way. Here there are some other options. So for example, you can also rotate the rotate the background mesh to, to better align the mesh, for example, in this place, but yeah, it's it's really the playing with the mesh. You can also set, for example, for some axial or for some rotational symmetrical parts you can set the cylindrical background mesh by enabling this command and setting the proper parameters yeah then 
as we shown, you can specifically set the level of refinement for each part. And sometimes if you have, for example, for example, usually for compressors, when, when the when the blades are un unshrouded, so there is the there is a place between the blade cap, let's say, this upper part and the shroud. And usually this cap is very small compared to the other other sizing of the of the, of the geometry. So you need to also have some clever refinement in these parts. So first option which came to my mind is okay. Or if you have set some standard parameters, you you will see some <laughs> significant flaw in the resulting geometry. So it means the shroud or the blade is matched is meshed too rough. Yeah. So the cell size is much larger than the gap. <clears throat> so you have the options. You have one option to okay to refine the whole shroud, for example. Yeah. To to have finer mesh everywhere and follow follow the follow the gap. So you can set it instead of level here was level one. I can set it to level four. <clears throat> yeah. The shroud is meshed properly, but I have almost two million cells. And I think okay, so this one or the second option is that I can refine not the, the not the shroud but the whole blade. So if I refine the whole blade because I have only the one component for blade or one STL, so I can <clears throat> refine the whole blade only. So I can set the level four for the whole blade, but I got almost three million or three and a half million cells. Just just because I would need to need to match this 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 part. But there is the option which is called gap refinement, yeah, by which you can enable here, you use gap refinement, and then new new column appear here. <clears throat> and you can set okay. Between between two parts of the geometry, for example, between between shroud and blade, I would like to mesh only the gap, yeah, not not the whole part, but only the gap. So you can set the higher level of refinement, for example, again to level four in the gap refinement, and the algorithm automatically detects small gaps between these two parts and try to mesh this part, only this part with the level four. <clears throat> and finally, instead of having millions of cells. Just because of meshing the gap between hub and shroud, between the blade and shroud, this approach creates a nice mesh and with less than half a million cells. Yeah, so sometimes there, there are clever, clever, clever feature using which you can locally refine the mesh. <clears throat> yeah, there, there is also there is also option uh, use the refinement region so you can create an artificial artificial shape in the in the geometry and show refinement region yeah and all the cells which are intersected by this virtual shape <clears throat> for them you can set level of refinement so we don't need it here <clears throat> but for example for the external aerodynamics you can you can Create some gradual refinement uh, among your among your object. Yeah, the inflation layer or boundary layer can be added. The task is simple. You, you said in the layers, in the layer column, you said how many layers you want to you want to add, and in the advanced meshing options for each component, you can set the parameters of the boundary layer. <clears throat> Yeah, so here's the description how the boundary layer parameter works. We will not do, we will not add them for our example because it also increased the mesh size and the simulation will be then slower. But for the real, real examples and the real cases, you usually need to need to add add the boundary layer to <clears throat> properly properly simulate the boundary layer at the walls, which basically create the good accuracy for the results so it is usually the must to create a boundary layer so i will be not speaking in too much details about this so you can find nice information here yeah here are some examples of adding the boundary layer yeah so you can go go through it here are also some examples how to increase the accuracy as i said the interfaces are also important so 
usually it, it is nice to have a common mesh refinement on the on the on the interfaces for the better for the better <clears throat> matching of the mesh. And <clears throat> here are several 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 parameters how to how to play with the advanced meshing and how to somehow influence the algorithm of the of the meshing. Okay, so I think it's pretty straightforward. So I will I will keep this up to you to go through this presentation and check what is also available to set in the in the simulation. Okay, maybe the last one, <clears throat> some general hints. So first you need to have a perfect STL, then you should start from the rough mesh. Yeah, so create a nice but rough mesh which can be simulated, run the simulation and check if everything works well, if the boundary conditions are okay, and if you get some relevant results, <clears throat> and then start to then you can start to refine the mesh more and you will also have the comparison of the of the rough mesh and finer mesh, how the how it influence the influence the results. Yeah, and always check the mesh visually because sometimes there are some flaws hidden inside your mesh, which which will impose the crash of the solver. So in more than 50%, these crashes are caused by the low quality of the mesh. <clears throat> okay, so let's say we are very satisfied with the, with the final mesh, and now we will go to set up a CFD simulation. So let's okay my case is safe and now I will enable the TCFD TCFD part. So now I have a new button here and let's go for let's go for it. Yes even in input requirement it's okay it's done and general and physics <clears throat> so maybe I will go by myself and sometimes I will borrow the presentation. So first item to set is the is the is the simulation type as i already mentioned our simulation simulations are always focused on the particular application so for fun we have a specific type fun as well as for the pumps water turbines for some wind turbine closed domain virtual tunnels for external <coughs> external aero and so on now in the physics so the time management, it's time management for the solver. So there are two options if you would like to simulate in steady state or in transient, <clears throat> steady state plus transient. So maybe I will borrow. So the steady state is the steady state simulation. There is no physical time and we are looking for a steady, steady and average solution. So we expect that this flow is somehow steady. It's not oscillating and and so on. So the simulation are usually accurate enough and the simulation is pretty pretty quick compared to the transient. So in transient mode, we have the dynamic mesh, so it's full transient simulation. So we can really see if we if we store each intermediate result, we can see really the physical rotation of the of the of the rotor. Is the real mesh motion? Rotors is physically rotating rotor is very physically rotating but the simulation is much much complicated much slower because you need to iterate over each time time step and so on <clears throat> and note why is there steady state plus transient because the steady state creates the initialization for the transient run because then <clears throat> the transient is much it it achieves convergence much quicker than if you start from some initial guess only Yeah, what we can set here. So for steady state, we have, or for both for steady state and transient, we have number of speed lines and number of points to be set. I will explain here. So <clears throat> what is the speed line? Maybe I will start with the iteration. So iteration is single computation loop connected to the steady state solver. And the solver needs usually hundreds of iteration to converge to the steady state solution. In the transient times, it is it, the situation is different. It is the real physical time for for which the simulation will look for the solution. So it will iterate over time steps until the final final transient time is reached. And <clears throat> what is the speed line? Because 
mainly speed lines for the rotating machinery. So speed line is a group of points with a common rotation speed. So if we simulate one speed line, so for example, our fan runs at a given RPMs, so we would like to simulate the the fan performance for the given fixed RPMs and one RPM. If we would like to, for example, simulate how it behaves for, I know, 2000 RPM, 2050 and two, 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 or 2500 and 3000 RPM. So we can we can set it within a single simulation. So we can set three, three speed lines and for example, six point each, but the point means it's a one CFD simulation for particular setup for for fixed boundary conditions. Usually if you would like to reveal the performance map for the fun, it means you you will vary, for example, flow rate or to, or pressure pressure values at the outlet or inlet, and it will show you the performance map. What what for example is the efficiency at the at the at the different flow rates. <clears throat> so these points define the speed line, yeah, and you can have more speed lines. That's that's the point. So this is an example. You have one speed line, so one revolution speed and five points, so five different boundary conditions, for example, flow rate, or you can have three speed lines, so three fixed RPMs, 2,000, 2,500 or and three, three, 3,000, for example, and for each, you will simulate six points with different flow rates. Yeah, and at the end, you will see these graphs which show you the performance of the fun at various conditions. Okay, so, so let's say, for our example, I, we will have three points to be simulated and I will keep the default iterations number. What is the proper iteration number? It, it's, there is no rule of thumb for that. Usually if your domain is larger and your mesh is finer, then it usually needs more iterations for, 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 reach, for reaching the convergence. So let's, we will keep it in steady state mode. And now we, we can go to the fluid properties. So there are ma mainly, I think, three re regimes. First is incompressible, so it's for for low pressure fans with low speed and so on. So we can treat it as incompressible. Usually if you have the max speed below three, 0.3 and the compression ratio below 0 0.1, 0 0.2, you can, you can easily go for the incompressible case. The physics is, is simpler and the simulation is faster or you can go for the compressible if the speed is above 0 0.3 Mach or if the pressure ratio is higher yeah where the compressible effects plays plays a role in the final for the final results so <clears throat> i think this is the high speed this is the high speed fan i think it has the diameter of the of the wheel is 0 0.3 meters yeah, but what is also clever you can go for cfd geometry here for the information and here you will see the ranges so, yeah <clears throat> so the bounding box in x direction so this this dimension is, is something like 0 0.9 meters yeah which also will give you if it will it if this number will be thousand times higher so it will point that the input geometry is in millimeters yeah, and then you need to you need to treat for example this uh, where is it this scale factor to the millimeters yeah so this is one one option how to how to know what are the dimensions of, of your geometry okay so i will use fluid defaults but you can you can preset the various dynamic viscosity density pressure and so on reference pressure and so on so i will keep on the fluid defaults let's say let's say if you have for example compressors or high speed high, high speed blowers which are which works in the transonic mode, it means that the, the, the Mach number is around one. So we can you, can, you should enable the transonic mode. Equation of state, you can switch between perfect gas or Penck Robinson. So for here, perfect gas will be enough. The transport, transport model for, <clears throat> for the viscosity variation based on the, based on the temperature and other, other quantities. So we can set constant or, or, or Sutherland. And if you would like to change the Sutherland, for example, Sutherland parameters, you can you can you can do it if you disable this use fluid defaults. But I will keep it in this way. 
All right, so so this is this. In the multiphysics, you can you can add some additional additional parameters or additional physics to be simulated. You can add, for example, porosity zones to some simulate some virtual heat exchangers or something like that. You can calculate H for the heat for the room for the heat transfer in the room, for example, for the for the some kind of how, how it is called. Uh, the comfort for the people and so you can add passive scalars to simulate for example I know, some kind of co concentration in the in the garage for example <clears throat> but for this application we don't need to add any other multiphysics here you can choose the turbulence which is the which is the science itself but usually k omega sst is a good good start and usually it is used for I don't know 70% of commercial and <clears throat> commercial applications, but you can go for the for the different 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 turbulence model. And here rotational frames and he, here because yeah the frame two which is the rotational one is some kind of automatically set to rotating and here you can set the RPMs. So I think this this um, fan operates at i have i have somewhere note yeah at 2980 rpm and now you miss you have to be careful what is the direction yeah because you can rotate in this way or in this way <clears throat> so maybe i i think i have a better visualization in the presentation La la, calculate it. Yeah, here, here you can find some details about those other multiphysics, turbulence model. Yeah, and this is the rule of thumb for the rotation. So the positive rotation is that if your thumb points in the direction of the axis, in our case in Z, and your let's say cross fingers then show the show the show the direction of the rotation. <clears throat> so in our case, if I point my right hand thumb along the z z axis then my fingers show the positive direction so the positive direction is this one so you can see that this is not the proper way of 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 rotation so this this one rotates in this manner right because this is the leading edge so in this way so i need to set the value as negative yeah for the proper direction this could be also common common mistake so just carefully set the the sign for the for the rotation speed okay in the simulation section there there are everything connected to the to the simulation <clears throat> to the simulation so for the solver okay, I, will, I will close this section so for the solver again we can set number of processor to be used so I have 10 processors. The numerical order usually start with the first first order, and if everything works, then recompute the case with the second order scheme. So start I will start with the first order scheme. Runtime evaluated quantities. So there's <clears throat> uh, other important parameters. I will borrow my presentation. So CFD simulation. Which is a little bit outdated, but but here what is important to introduce the averaging window. So because the solver iterates over the iteration, and each iteration gives you gives you new results. Yeah, <clears throat> and because we are looking for steady state solution, and usually the physics in general is transient, even for the rotational <laughs> rotational reference frame. So we usually can't expect the perfectly perfectly constant constant values so therefore we we averaging the solution over the given size over the given window of the given size what does that mean that for example here you can see the graph of the real simulation <clears throat> and the efficiency so the purple line shows you the instant values for each iteration so we can see what we can expect because the simulation is rotational and the, the flow varies during the rotation or there are some 
<clears throat> recirculation areas which which, are, which has the natural transient property or non -steady, non steady property so we can see some pattern in the in the in the in the results but what what is the proper what is the proper final final value so is this or this it's different the difference is almost 1% so what we can easily do because the oscillations are some kind of convergence yeah it converts to some value so we do the averaging and the averaging should be large enough for smooth out this oscillation <clears throat> so if we use the averaging window of 200 then then we can see the the green line which is the always the average averaged value over the last 200 iterations so if we stop the simulation here or here or here we here we always get the same results so if there were no, if there were no averaging window so if we stop the simulation here or here we get totally different results so this is the main purpose of this averaging and the averaging should be should be large enough because if the averaging window is, is too low then then again if you stop the simulation here and next time here you will get the different results yeah so therefore this <clears throat> this is very important averaging averaging uh, parameter so here we, we will keep 100 let's say because we have 500 iterations so we will see after the first simulation if it's okay or if it need, needs to be adjusted we can add some right average quantities so again you will get at the end you will get the instant values of the pressure so last pressure result will be saved but you can also save the average pressure yeah, or average velocity for further processing in paraview for example so you will have available also the, <clears throat> the average pressure from which all the integral values and the average values were were, were evaluated the efficiency probe because without without establishing or computing the efficiency pressure drop compression number and so the the simulation is useless because we need to know these numbers so here we define from which places we would like to read the pressures torques and so on so basically here we set what is the inlet patch from which inlet pressure inlet velocity i don't know other quantities will be taken and the same for the outlet so here the outlet pressure outlet velocities and so and the torque patches from which <clears throat> patches we would like to read the torque so here the only blades but for example i would like to also add the hub and shroud yeah, because hub and shroud also rotates and creates some frictions and so on so i would like to evaluate the torque for all the rotating patches and for example you can add more efficiency probes yeah if you would like to have just the efficiency of the impeller itself without the volume <clears throat> so we can say okay inlet will be impeller blades or the torque patches will be yeah all rotating patches but the outlet i don't i would like to see what is the pressure ra ra race or pressure difference only on the wheel so i can say that outlet will be outlet of the rotor and then i will have two reports reporting just the parameters of the wheel and the parameters of the whole system for example okay here we can set if you would like to average based on the area or or flux average quantities yeah, on the interfaces because at the end we would like to have one value for whole interface not only value at the particle point and the averaging is done based on the area averaged or based on the flux average or flow flow averaged uh, yeah then we can also specify it <clears throat> or we would like to see what what are the forces acting on some part of the of the domain so if there is some other part which which is not included in the torque patches because automatically automatically on the all torque patches all the forces are evaluated but if there is other part like some obstacle in the spiral for example and you would like to have have the forces acting on this you can add, add it here so you will just say what is the lift drag <clears throat> drag and center of rotation for example for external aerodynamics so you will fill the pro fill the parameters here you will choose on which patch you would like to see the forces or evaluate the forces and you can you will see them at the end of the simulation 
the same for the probes you can put the point inside to the, the domain and in this domain you can then watch the quantities yeah so it's instant quantities directly in, in the in the particle point within within the simulating domain you can also compute the pressure coefficients for example usually for external aerodynamics but it, it can be handy also for other applications then there is a convergence check so if you if the simulation converge before the, the maximum iteration are reached then it's it can skip the rest so we can save some time so you can choose based on which quantity you would like to decide that the that the simulation is converged so for example i would like to see okay the, if the efficiency oscillates less than 0 0.001 in the relative manner then i would like to stop so over if over the averaging window maybe i have some some uh, oh no, I don't have I don't have any any specific specific uh, uh, image for it but you can imagine if over the over the averaging window the instant values are oscillating less than 0 0.001 times the current value so it means it should be very small then the simulation is stopped before before the maximum iterations are reached or you can also follow the average quantity so if average quantity the the difference between the maximum and minimum level uh, minimum and maximum value over the averaging window is less than the threshold defined then the simulation also stopped so for example here we can set efficiency averaged is less than 0 0.001 so if the simulation runs at 100 percent efficiency which is not it is not feasible but let's say if then it stops the iteration if the efficiency differs less than 0.1 percent because all the values are relevant or relative to the current value so let's say i will use just this convergence check <clears throat> here in the controls you can find the particle value values or description in the in the presentation <clears throat> but here you set the particle values numerical from the <clears throat> numerical parameters for the solver so here are some relaxation factors for relaxing the solution <clears throat> usually it is that for increasing the uh, increasing the stability and decreasing the possible oscillation numerical oscillation of the solver well well known phenomenon relaxation factors then there are some bounding limits to make the solver more robust so you can set what is the maximum and minimum available pressure so usually it should be it should be safe range that you you have to be sure that your physical values should be inside these ranges and some <clears throat> advanced setup for the linear solvers and equation solvers so usually you can keep keep this number in in default values and now boundary conditions so here we basically define the physics of the of our simulation so because we have three points so we need to have set three three groups of inlet outlet boundary conditions maybe i will i will go for for the proper part so here you have a list of all inlet and outlet boundary conditions and for example here is an example of typical boundary condition so you either set total pressure at the inlet and static pressure at the outlet yeah, to follow how what are the parameters of your fund, for example, at the given pressure scenarios. Or you can combine flow rate at the inlet and uh, outlet at the, um, and fixed pressure at the outlet, or vice versa, total pressure at the inlet and flow rate velocity at the outlet or total pressure at the inlet and so-called so-called outlet vent which which is let's say kind of kind of special money condition designed for compressors and blowers <clears throat> so it somehow mimics closing vent 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 ventil uh, venti uh, valve <laughs> valve some virtual valve at the end of the of the at the output of of, the, of your geometry i think the I have somewhere also the description of these boundary conditions. So this specifically, uh, 
okay maybe i was too quick but outlet vent yeah here outlet vent boundary conditions so you set this boundary condition with respect to the to the resistant number r and and basically it set it sets the static pressure the outlet based on the local velocity local density and our number r so bar r we we are decreasing <clears throat> the influence of the dyna dynamic pressure at the outlet and it's slowly clo closing the valve based on the local velocity or this dynamic pressure and it can nicely reveal the compressor or blower map so sometimes it's handy to use this boundary condition okay so let's let's start with this so for example we can set this outlet outlet vent boundary boundary condition, which could be handy for this type of simulation, or you can set the pressure pressure if you if you know the target pressure, but I I don't know the target pressure of the of this fan, so I will use this outlet vent, so it should reveal for me automatically, without the proper knowledge of the parameters of this fan. So I will set one atmosphere at the inlet, so we can we can choose different units, so one atmosphere at the inlet. Total pressure, okay, I will keep it as 20 degrees, so but you can change it. Follow your follow your preference. The in the turbulent inlet quantities, for example, I can set it as turbulent intensity and for example viscosity ratio. So I will set for some standard turbulent viscosity ratio of five and reference velocity from my notes here. So it means what is some guess for the inlet velocity from which then these these turbulent quantities will be derived so i think it's something like seven meters per second for this particle case and particle for this uh, rpms and at the outlet we can give it a try to set this outlet vent boundary conditions so we can see that there are several parameters there is a some some kind of reference pressure and and uh, and the uh, and the density uh, and the resistance number so the reference pressure so if the resistance number is zero i will i will i will usually use atmospheric pressure right as as the reference value so i will say the base pressure as one atmosphere which is basically this value but i will set it this way for example relaxation is somehow relaxing to, to avoid big oscillation, big big changes of this of this value, of this value of P during between the iteration. So it is somehow also relaxing to be more smooth. And the maximum pressure also from the stability point of view. So I think I don't know if this this uh, this fan could have the pressure ratio 1.3 or something like that so definitely if i set two atmosphere almost two atmospheres as the max pressure it will be okay and now this number it depends on the sizing of the outlet and so because yeah because it depends the value it, itself and the proper resistance value depends on the on the velocity at yeah, the outlet so it depends on the flow flow rate what is the proper value of the r but usually it's some kind of for the for this <clears throat> for this type of funds we can say set from let's say three seven fourteen yeah it's my guess and we will see at the end of course to reveal more nicer performance map you will need more more points to simulate it to have more points on the on the performance performance line on the on the performance map okay so then for the for the walls we can set the boundary condition so i can we can set the standard wall functions and no slip it means the rigid walls which is common and the temperature boundary condition <clears throat> i would prefer to to have adiabatic walls yeah there is no heat transfer on the wall so <clears throat> i will set all walls as adiabatic all right and the same i will do for the spiral part so I will set adiabatic walls everywhere. Perfect. Interface conditions. So I have two options. First one with MI and second one is mixing plane. Maybe I will again borrow the, the 
the presentation. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, because yeah, in the new version it is a little bit different, but so I think the definition is the definition was in the in the mesh part. Uh, sorry, I will quickly browse browse there. It was at the beginning, yeah. So this was moved to the to the interface conditions, and in the previous version it was directly in the T mesh by setting mixing planes. Uh -huh. oh, okay, maybe I will skip it. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm approaching there. Oh, sorry for the delay. Yeah, here, here. So basically now you have two options. One AMI, which is called frozen rotor, or mixing plane approach and number of mixing planes. So it means that MXP zero. It means it means frozen rotor in this manner. So this is this is now frozen frozen rotor. It connected components which are not rotational symmetric, and and the flow recirculation occurs at the interface. It means usually if if the geometry is not symmetrical, so the volume is definitely definitely not symmetrical because mixing plane imposes symmetry. Yeah, it somehow kind of expect symmetry on the interface, and usually it is used for connecting the segment cases. Yeah, where you have two periodic segments and the interface is not matching <clears throat> perfectly, like in this case. Then you can use the mixing plane approach or stage. I think it's called in CFX, and AMI is frozen rotor. Yeah, so <clears throat> it maps the 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 values directly from one side to to other side the mixing plane averages cir circumferentially the results and communicate via this averaged averaged values so ami is better choice in this case so i will use ami in some other cases you can use mixing plane approach initial conditions so you can use inlet turbulent values as initial so it automatically somehow takes the, the values from the inlet values of the of the of the turbulent quantities so I can get rid of it. So I don't I don't need now I don't need to care about the inlet or initial turbulence values. The pressure is good to set to follow one of the boundary conditions. So for example I will follow the inlet boundary condition so what one atmosphere <clears throat> and velocity yeah, I can start from zero again, or I can set at least, for example, because the in inlet flow rate is go is in this way, so I will set I don't know five meters per second. It's just the initial value, yeah. So if you set really wrong, it can influence the early stage of the simulation. But the, if you set it into into some meaningful meaningful values, then it usually starts starts without any any problem. And temperature, I will also said the same as for the inlet boundary condition yeah and now the last one is the process post-processing so here you can choose which quantity you would like to see in the final report and which which units you would like to see there so if you if flow rate or velocity <clears throat> will be the main quantity for the graphs what is the pressure if atmosphere or pascals temperature if so, so if in Kelvin or the Celsius mass flow units and so on you can also add some additional graphs for example if you have some measurement data you can put it directly for the comparison into the report you can also generate blade to blade views and meridional averages so maybe I will I will try to do that so blade to blade views so I would like to see it in the rotating component here I need to define what is up and what is shroud yeah, for the tr proper transformation to the blade to blade view and I would like to see for example relative velocity because I'm in a rotating component with LIC filter it means it will visualize the streamlines and the span is the relative position between hub and shroud okay and the meridional average is just the circumferential averaging on the meridional plane of the rotor so I will 
choose the component one of the rotor and I would like to see, for example, total pressure. <clears throat> Here you can add some sampling so you can, for some, I don't know, future export or if you would like to put some data to the external codes, you can extract the values on some surfaces you want. Yeah, so, for, so for example, I would like to ex extract the values on hub, the pressure values and temperature values on hub. This is usually done for some FEA analysis in external program, for example. And finally, you can say save the mesh and quantities, surface quantities, again for the future post processing in other 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 softwares and so on, for example. Okay, so I will. I will save this. I will, okay, I will write and clean everything. Okay, I have something is check setup. Okay, again, what, what I miss is this, this nice button, check setup of activated modules. So it will automatically check if, if the setup is consistent, what, if everything is set properly, yeah. So if I click it, it will tell me, okay, the wheel diameter must be positive. So I think it is uh, in the simulation. And here, yeah, here the wheel diameter. So I forgot <clears throat> to set this parameter. As I mentioned, I think the wheel diameter is 0 0.27 meters. So I will set it and again, save it, check. And now, okay, setup is okay. So I will give it a try again. Okay, and now I will run the simulation. The set was changed. But I was I was clicking on it. So again, click right. Okay, I need I need to click just the right. Sorry for that. And now I will click run all. Okay, so yeah, we are almost at the end, so I will just follow follow the simulation, I will show you how to follow the results and how to read the read the report. And meanwhile, if you have any questions, so put, put them into your answer or your question, question, question panel. And maybe we will have time to, to answer a few, few questions. <clears throat> and if not, so I will, I will end and today's presentation by commenting the results. And then I will tomorrow, I think I will send you the recording and I will send you the software and then you can play on your own. And maybe in the next session, if, you, if, if it's need for the next session, we can discuss your particle, set up your particle application and so. <clears throat> yeah, so this was some kind of introduction. Okay, now now the simulation is running, as you can see. So you can follow some basic information. So which point is simulated? What is the current time of the simulation? And what what time is left to finish the simulation? You can play here with the layout. So for example, I can open the new layout. I can create here the line chart view. And in the line chart view, I can enable, for example, these residuals to see. I can split the view at the new line chart view and for example, follow here the quantities. <clears throat> so if you enable it and go to the display, so now you can check which quantity you would like to follow. So for example, the efficiency, so efficiency averaged and efficiency instant. Yeah, so now we can nicely follow, follow these graphs. You can adjust the view, for example. So if I click here, you, hear, you click for the view and here left axis range, so I would like to adjust this range. So left axis custom range. And because the values are almost 80%, so I would like to uh, increase the minimum axis to 60%, let's say, yeah, or 70 to, to just zoom, zoom in on the proper values. You can add another graph, for example, with, I don't know, some total pressure difference, let's say, which is, uh, for example, delta p dot, delta or p dot ratio, for example, which also important parameter compression number. Yeah, in the same way. 
Okay, so this is what you can do during the simulation. If something is wrong or you are you are expecting some problems or you would like to check how the current results looks like, so you can click here to view the current time step. If you click it, so the new let's say item appear here with the with the result at the current iteration, and you can watch, for example, the pressure. You can watch all the quantities, velocities, and so on for the current time step. So, if, for example, if you see that some values are not smooth and there are some wild oscillation, so then you can maybe stop the simulation and check where the problem could be. What also you can set if you follow the so, for example, you can see, yeah. You can skip the simulation, but now, for example, you, you will see that the simulation was skipped automatically yeah, by the by the convergent criterion. And for example, just to show you, you can skip skip the point manually. For example, if you already see, okay, the the mesh the simulation is converged, but the convergent criterion is were not triggered, so you can trigger it manually yeah, by skip point. So let's say, okay, let's see. Okay, the simulation is converged, which is not but but only for the for the training purposes. I can click skip point. So the simulation is skipped, and because it was the last point, now the simulation, the results are are stored and the report is generating now. So after the mesh report is generated, you can follow the results and watch what you get. From the simulation. All right, so basically this is this is very basics of how to work with the with, with the with the software. So the important part is preparing the the geometry in the proper way, setting the mesh, setting the CFD simulation, and and simulate simulate the results or simulate the the problem. There could be many many options or many. <clears throat> many problems you you can face during the preparation from very beginning so then we we can we, we are here to support you so if you have any particular problem just contact contact me on my email address and we can we can support you and for example after some sometimes you get you will get rid of it you can some somehow gather your questions and then we can have another meeting to answer just your question and your particular problems because the yeah, there are the software is so complex that to really discuss every part of the setup will take hours and dozens dozens of hours and more. So I think it it's 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 more efficient to to discuss only the things which makes you trouble or problems. Yeah. So in the future we can we can manage the next meeting with your with your questions and we can we can we can discuss your questions and or comments all together and so on and with your particular topics because i'm not sure what 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 would you like to do which what is your field of interest and what are your goals so i think it's up to you now to get familiar with the, with the, with the software and i will help you to overcome some problems yeah which you can face during during learning learning the code and learning the software all right, so we are almost at the end. So I can go back here. For example, here is the you know here is the render view. No, he is the HTML report view. Yeah, you can open it. For example, in the new window here, HTML HTML view, and here in the TCFD you can see the report. Right. So after the report is generated, we can we can visualize the results. Yeah, everything. All the details are also available on the disk. So here is our mesh test mesh test folder. In TCFD, you can see you can see all the all the data. For those you know, for those of you, you who know OpenFoam, the structure is OpenFoam case. And for example, all the all the results are also stored here in the post processing. For example, in the efficiency, you can go for the efficiency final. And you can directly open it in the spreadsheet view, and there are really the integral values, 
efficiency, mass flow, flow rate, total pressure ratio for each point. Yeah, so you can also post process it manually here, for example. Now the now the report is done, so uh, I can I can visualize it. So if I click here on the I button, so this is the report with the rendering of the, our input geometry, and here are here are all the important simulation parameters like mesh size, average Y plus, which is important for the let's say wall treatment and so on, simulation score. Yeah, if there are some trouble with flow rates at the inlet outlet, or if some values are bounded, of or if the residuals are oscillating or are at a high level, it's not based for, from the from the value, absolute value point of view, then it will show some, for, for example, orange or red red button or red icon. So if you see any problems here, you should go back to the simulation setup and somehow analyze what happened and why it happened. Then we have several sections with, with the characteristics of the fan. So here we have the flow and compression number for each point, efficiency the same, the, the efficiency convergence, we can see here torque, axial force, radial force power, and many other. Yeah, so you can go through it and watch what you get from the results. Okay, so I think two hours are left. Yeah, we are 10 minutes, I'm 10 minutes late. So I would like to stop the webinar at this point. And if you have no no question anymore, so we can, we can say goodbye and maybe I will check if there is no questions. No, no, I, I can't see no new questions. So we can, we can say goodbye for now and good luck with the code. And if you have any troubles, just write me an email and we can, we can solve it. We can solve it via email or there will be more questions. We can then schedule next meeting, next webinar in the same way, but it will be more interactive with you and you will be asking or discussing, discussing your topics or your problems and, and, and so on. All right. So I hope it was not so much boring. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Thank you very much. And I hope we will see next time during our, next, let's say, next meeting. And so good luck. Take care of yourself. And I wish you a wish you good time. And you are very welcome. And yeah, thank you for your attention. And see you, see you next time. Yeah. So thank you. Have a nice day and bye bye.